Price objection is one of the most common objections in sales. And often, when big money is on the table, it's nothing more than a game, a test of strength between the buyer and seller, inseparable part of the sales process, and anyone who is serious about their work must develop negotiation skills. Especially that the competition wanting to take someone's place is ready to make very big concessions. And clients won't hesitate to use their strength to squeeze their suppliers as much as possible to get a better price. In this video, how not to be pushed to the wall, gain an advantage over a client and the competitors in sales negotiations and successfully close the sale. When it comes to deals where big money is at stake, usually you won't be dealing with people who are falling for cheap tricks and attempts to distract their attention from the main problem. So talking about returns from the investment in the future and the value of the solution, let's be honest, it has very little effect on the course of price negotiations and their outcome. Personal buyers have a good understanding and recognition of the market. So forget about win-win situation. That's not what sales negotiation is about. It's not about reaching agreement that will please everybody. It's about achieving the agreement that is acceptable to both parties. Because very often, if the buyer has no choice, he must make a deal whether he wants it or not. This is how it works in business. If you sell to industry, for example, your job is to get a position that will give you an advantage over the competition and it needs to be done at a very early stage, over before an official inquiry is even sent. By choosing the solution and product features that are unique for your product and company. Thanks to close cooperation with the end user, you need to implement a solution that will not only be optimal for the customer, but will also allow you to take a strong position by specifying your unique product features, which will be a big obstacles to meet for other companies willing to make an offer. Not everyone has to be satisfied with the outcome of the talks. Generally, negotiations are a type of conversation that evoke a lot of emotion, and people are not as rational beings as we like to think about ourselves. It's our animal mind guides and steers our rational thinking and react emotionally to everything that happens around us. Therefore, our task, especially in sales, where long-term relationships are very important, is not just about client accepting our terms and conditions. It's about establishing rapport, gain trust, and persuade other parties to our rights and empathy. The most important thing to be aware of is that sales negotiations generally make sense if both parties have common interests. If one of the parties makes absolute demands and is aware of that, there is no room for an agreement. The lack of willingness to compromise means that one party doesn't see the benefits of reaching an agreement or is just convinced of their strength, so in their opinion, doesn't have to make any concessions. Mindset is crucial when it comes to talking about things that evoke a lot of emotions. If your client knows you desperately need a sale, has a much stronger position than you. For this reason, you need to build an abundance of new prospects around you. You should always have alternatives and be ready to walk away if the client makes absurd demands. This will not only empower you, but also affects your sales negotiations in a positive way. If you see willingness to make concessions, you need to know the reasons why your counterpart is looking for agreement. Gaining this knowledge is essential because only then you will be able to estimate where is the threshold. The line, which if crossed, may destroy the rapport and lead to break down of the talks. In other words, you need to understand the client's motives and his backup options in the case of breaking of the talks. Basically, how strong your negotiation position is and whether you need to compromise. Success in talks largely depends on the ability to put yourself in a position where someone needs to make a deal more than you. Equally important is identification of opportunities. Areas where you have a competitive edge over other suppliers of similar products. It's always a good idea to identify companies with which your client is in touch and are able to beat your price. Evaluate the possible gains and losses and the psychological profile of your counterpart. Sometimes when you push the client to the wall too hard, he will try to get back at you in the future. That's why it's worth taking a small step back just to makes someone feel slightly better in the case if you don't want to admit any of their main expectations. 
when the position allows you to do so. Especially when it's a regular and prospective client, because sales is a constant process that moves back and forth. Today, you have the power to marry your client. This is why maintaining good relationship is so important. Ultimate success in sales negotiations doesn't depend on the arguments. Success depends on the proper preparation, on the information you are able to collect, whether you know the client's expectations, technical requirements, all decision makers involved in the decision making process, strengths and weaknesses of your competition. If someone is able to take your place, we can or completely destroy the power of your negotiation position by presenting a much better offer. Gathering intelligence is the key factor when it comes to gaining the advantage. The more you know, the more power you have. In many cases, closing a sale has no chance of success simply because six people don't identify correctly all factors that have the biggest impact on the final outcome, which makes them unable to adequately respond to new facts and circumstances. In a game where stakes are high, only the smartest and the toughest players are able to win. Nobody can win who is unaware of what is going on his market. Some of the worst negotiators are those who only see the merits of their own business proposal. The best negotiators listen to their clients, understand the dynamic of the market and where are the hot buttons, are aware of their own limitations and when they can push harder. To be really effective, you have to identify all people who take part in the decision-making process. You need to talk to people who are authorized to make decisions and concessions. Buyers frequently ask for a better price and higher discount with no intention of placing an order, no matter how much you lower your price. So be alert when you don't get a clear signals and information about your client counterpart expectations. Like for example, clear defined target price and declaration about further steps in the case you decide, for example, to lower the price and meet expectation of your prospect. This most likely means that there are other salespeople involved and clients test each of the supplier to see how much they can gain. When your prospect has many options to choose, he stands in a position where he can test freely where the limits are, especially if you haven't built any relations yet. From the buyer's point of view, the more sellers, the better for him. Generally, the more people in the game, the better for the buyer. And still, many salespeople feel bad when client uses his advantage to achieve his goals and forgets about partnership. Professional, accept reality as it is. Define the boundaries that you will stick to. Theoretically, everyone knows how far they can go. In reality, however, prolonged negotiations and unhealthy desire to close a sale and get a commission push salespeople to make desperate decisions. In some industries, the decision-making process may take several weeks or even months, which is the cause of irritation and nervous moves. Salespeople make too far-reaching agreements and sign unprofitable contracts in the hope of getting any profit in the future with often leads to disastrous results. Be ready to walk away from the table if terms of deal are unacceptable. Determine your target price and walk away price before starting any talks. Don't Go desperately into the business, you may regret. Too far reaching concessions might be a huge burden later. When emotions will fall and rational thinking get back, the guarantee of fulfilling made promises ultimately rests on your shoulders. So learn to play well with the cards you keep in your hand. Just present your terms and conditions, don't ask for clients' badges and stick to your price when your position is strong enough. At the same time, build rapport with your prospect and take care about their feelings. Such negotiation evoke emotions, often causes anxiety, anger and frustration, but also gives fulfillment and satisfaction. It's up to you what the result will be and how your counterpart reacts. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this yet and see you soon.